Welcome to JSA TV, where we're covering the latest news, trends, and innovations from thought leaders like these guys in the digital infrastructure industry. I'm Dean Perrine, EVP at JSA, and we are coming to you live. Gentlemen, we're live, so don't make any mistakes. Okay. Right, got it. <laughs> we are coming at you live from Honolulu, Hawaii, PTC 2025. And to my right, I have Mr. Seth Davis. Seth is the Director of Engineering for the Data Center Innovations at McKinstry. And I have Thomas Tellefson. Thomas is the SVP of Data Center Innovation at McKinstry. Gentlemen, welcome to JSA TV. Thanks for the opportunity. Yeah, thanks for having us. Super yeah. excited for this conversation. Me too. Me too. Thank yeah. you. Thank yeah. you for saying that. Yeah. Very few people say I'm real excited it's to see you. It's <laughs> genuine too. It's genuine excitement. <laughs> yeah. I, I, pre yeah. I appreciate yeah. that. So, okay. Uh, Seth, I believe this question, this first question is for you. Yeah. Um, okay. Innovations in data center design that are driving efficiency while balancing environmental impact. Easy question, right? Easy question, right. <laughs> yeah. And eyes wide open to that question, Dean, yeah. where not designing and building a data center is more sustainable than designing and building a data center. So with that in mind, we need a lot of data centers. So yes, let's do. do it the best way we can. And at McKinstry, we have a guiding light of trying to be the best stewards for mm -hmm. the climate, for the world that we can. Yeah. And so there's ways that we can try to make that process as efficient as possible. Mm -hmm. um, and some things that come to mind are with that notion of not building a data center is more efficient than building a data center. <laughs> yeah, the sincerity comes out on camera. And folks, if you yeah. can't see this, how sincere this guy is, um, then then shame on us for not making sure that you can because it's it's real. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, rough numbers, 50% of our data centers are operating with half capacity. Mm -hmm. So instead of building a new data center, if we can harness that stranded power, um, that is a great way to harness the computing that our world needs yeah. without necessarily going through the environmental impact of building that data center. So that's one thing that we can help out with analyzing and trying to maximize that stranded power usage. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing that comes to mind. Another is optimizing the design and build for what the needs of the project are. So a project that is in Washington State has different needs than a project that is in Texas. Sure. And so to optimize the design, to maximize the energy efficiency, the water usage with yeah. the water use availability, yeah. to right size it for that particular design is another opportunity there. So there are many ways to tweak. And yeah. with liquid cooling, it also moves the needle a little bit. Mm -hmm. Liquid cooling, the systems tend to run hotter. So one, it, it brings in opportunity for economization, which yeah. is a more energy yeah. efficient approach. And it also maximizes the opportunity for heat reuse. And that is a very untapped opportunity in our market is to be able to use all this heat yeah. that these data centers are generating with the need of a, a commercial and residential industry that need a lot of heat and are trying to decarbonize and electrify. Yeah. A hot dog. I mean, that's that, that you're the first person to say that. And it surprises me, frankly. You're the first person to like go to, to that far with like what 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 could we do with the heat that that is being produced here? Um, one of the things that um, is has become abundantly clear in in your answers is that the innovation that you are discussing is in lockstep with the innovation of the technology that's being housed in the data centers. Yeah. That you know, so it's almost it's almost like a uh, uh, it will AI provide provide a solution to its own challenge yeah. in a lot of ways. The exciting part about AI coming to the frame and yeah. the different approach that we need to take yeah. to serve that AI load is I like to say the tail wags the dogs mm -hmm. in the data center. Yeah. So the operation of the data center is really driven by what the needs of the end use devices are. Mm -hmm. And as we develop solutions to uh, be able to serve those end use needs with AI, we need to learn more about it. Yeah. Before there was a firewall that was always up, yeah. like you don't really know a lot what's going on on the IT side. Yeah. They didn't know a lot what's going on on the facility side, but now to provide solutions, that wall needs to be broken down yeah. and to provide better solutions. We can, if we work with the IT dividers on the facility side, we can not only optimize the design, but also provide better performance for them. 
I love it. I'm going to get back on script. Thank you very yeah, much yeah, for that. Yeah. Um, uh, addressing the intersection. I'm back on script and following right in the footsteps here. Um, intersection of sustainability and scalability in data center operations. How are you addressing that intersection? Sustainability, scalability. Yeah, scalability. So what, as at McKinstry, we were design, manufacture, build, operate, maintain. Mm -hmm. And with that, manufacturing can play a huge role in the scalability of mm -hmm. these designs. And so it, it is tough to go into a project that is already designed and permitted and about to go to build and maximize that manufacturing. Mm -hmm. But there, if you're able to get in early and design for manufacturing, you can really harness that capability of scalability in the design. And with that scalability, you can eliminate a lot, eliminate a lot of the waste that goes into construction. I love it. Yeah. Thanks. Thomas, you want to jump in here? Yeah, I think yeah. one thing to add there too is trying to understand where technology is going, mm -hmm. right? In terms of, you know, higher density chips, which hopefully means we can bring warmer water temperatures to them and providing the adaptability, just add another illity into there. Um, <laughs> a lot of illities here, guys. Illities, but <laughs> providing adaptability to how the building can adjust to new technologies, mm -hmm. I think is a really key component of that intersection as well. I love it. Um, I, I, I meant to underline predictive maintenance. Yeah. I have never had anyone on JSA TV ever say predictive and maintenance oh, back yeah. to back. Tell me everything about that. We've created thousands of these tiny robots that go into facilities <laughs> and can see the future I love it of already. everything. Um, no, I mean, so to Seth's point, we're design, manufacture, build, operate, maintain, you know, operate, maintain being some of the biggest components of that continuum. Right? Yeah. And in that, we have always believed in preventative maintenance is what it has mm -hmm. always been. And, you know, I think with technology and the data you can harvest off of, you know, fans and bearings and runtime and compare that to other facilities, predictive maintenance is more about, hey, that bearing's near end of life. It's probably yeah. cheaper to replace it now versus, you know, wait for it to get to end of life and replace it then and see what happens. The other real key thing is maintenance is really intrusive to data center operations, mm. right? They, they don't necessarily enjoy having vendors show up on different days to hit different yeah. pieces of equipment. And so predictive maintenance really allows you to be more proactive in the scheduling yeah. of that maintenance, um, which you know helps save a ton of money in terms of you don't need the operations team having to babysit the vendors all the time. The vendors like it because they can get in and out a lot sooner. So it is something that we're, we're really big on. You know, another component to it as well is uh, virtual reality operational support. So, you know, via Zoom or Teams, there's some really cool technology out there of coaching some of the on-site operations staff through some of these repairs that need to happen, yeah. have happened instead of going out to the site itself. So that, that part of the industry is the same with the others. I mean, technology is changing so quickly. We're very excited to be on the leading edge of it and kind of see where it takes us. Leading edge, I in my mind, I was thinking, these guys are looking, these guys are, are talking about what else can we do? Yeah, it, we hear a lot about uh, what we're doing. Yeah. You guys are talking about what else can we do, and we're doing all the stuff that people are doing. What else can we do? Yeah. I love that message. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. a that's a great message, guys. And thanks for being uh, on JSA TV. We appreciate it. This has been yeah, super fun. For having us. Yeah, no, yeah. fun for me too. Thanks, yeah. guys. Yeah. And thank you, viewers, for watching JSA TV. Stay curious, stay connected, uh, stay healthy, and uh, we'll see you soon. <laughs>